we have a home page we have a portfolio page very simple we have a buy page still pretty simple but we don't have anything on our sell page yet in fact we don't even renavigate whenever we click this so that is the next step implementing the sell page but before we get into that we need to actually create a service that allows us to sell stocks. So that's going to be our first step, completing our domain layer and adding that service. So if we bring up the UML, I haven't looked at this in quite a while, but we do have the sell stock service planned out. It's been here the whole time, just never implemented it. So here in our domain layer, let's add an interface here. Going to go inside this transaction services folder along with our buy stock service. And this will be the I sell stock service. So of course this is going to be public and it's just going to have our one method for now and that's going to return the account with the new sell transaction and this is going to be a method to sell a stock and of course it's going to need an account, the symbol that the account would like to sell and the amount of shares that the account wants to sell as well. And let's import all this and most importantly just like I did for the I buy stock service interface I want to have all this documentation here so I can get that on my IntelliSense when I use this in other classes. So let's generate that with a triple slash. So there we go, just some pretty straightforward documentation. Now of course I also want to document exceptions because those are really helpful when you're using this class. You want to make sure you know what it throws so that you can eventually handle those exceptions. Now if we take a look at our buy stock service interface, we kind of have an idea of what exceptions this could throw because our sell stock service is going to use some of the same services as this buy stock service. So we can probably expect an exception if the transaction fails. So I'm just going to copy that in here. And then obviously we know to sell a stock, we're going to have to search for the symbol that we want to sell. So this invalid symbol exception could definitely occur inside of the service. Let's make sure we bring in the namespace for that exception. And I expect to add another exception, but we'll come back to that later when we start implementing that. For now, let's actually create an implementation of our sell stock service as a class. So we'll make that public and implement that interface. So let me just document what I want to occur inside this method in order to sell a stock. So just some general comments before I write this out. First, we need to make sure the seller has enough shares. And then I want to get the price of the stock so that we know how much money to add to the seller's account. And then of course we want to add an asset transaction for the sale to the user's account. And finally update the account. And finally, we're just going to return the seller's new account that's been updated. So I'm going to have to make this method async. And let's start going through here and implementing all this. So to make sure the seller has sufficient shares, that's probably going to be the most complex logic inside of this method. So first we need to figure out how many shares the account really has on it for the particular symbol. So we're going to put that into a variable, we'll call that account shares, and I'm just going to move this right into a method just to make it read a little bit cleaner. So we'll call that get account shares for symbol, and we'll pass in the symbol, and we're also going to have to give the account too, so we can access the account's asset transactions. So let's generate that method. So first, we're going to get the account transactions for the symbol. And to do that, we have our asset transactions on the seller's account. And we need to just filter those so that we only get the transactions for the symbol that we're dealing with here. And that is inside this asset nested object. So there's the symbol on the asset transaction. And we need to make sure that equals the symbol that we're trying to sell. Let me just add an explicit type there. And now that we have these filtered transactions, we can take those, we can sum the total amount of shares based on these transactions. So we'll take the asset transaction, and if it was a purchase, then we'll just sum up the shares of that asset transaction's purchase. But if it wasn't a purchase and they sold shares, then we're going to subtract the amount of shares. And that'll give us back the total result, the account shares for the particular symbol. So great, now we have that method. So pretty straightforward from here, if the account shares are less than the shares that they're trying to sell, then they don't have enough shares and we need to, in this case, throw an exception. So I'm going to throw a new exception here and I'm going to create a new exception for this. This is going to be the insufficient shares exception. So similar to the buy stock service, we had an insufficient funds exception, except this is kind of just like the inverse, I would say, since we're trying to sell. So just implement exception. 
we're going to generate all these constructors. Actually, I don't really need this protected one. Get rid of that. And I always like to add additional information to my exceptions. So in this case, we can add the symbol that the user has insufficient shares for. We can add a property for the current account shares. So how many shares they actually have. And then we'll have another property for the required shares. And then with those properties, we can take all of those through the constructor. Let's just add all these. And actually, now that I think about it, since we take these all through the constructor, I feel like it would be a good idea to make these read only so that some class doesn't intercept this exception and change these properties, which could cause issues. So now that we have this exception, we're ready to use it so we can throw this insufficient shares exception. And we got the symbol on hand, we got the account shares, and we have the required shares too. So we got all our data and we're now throwing this exception, which means in our interface, we should document this exception. So we need to make sure we let everyone know that this could throw the insufficient shares exception. So thrown if the seller has insufficient shares for the symbol. Great, so that validation is all done. Now we're ready to get the price of the stock symbol. So we're gonna get the stock price and to do that, we're gonna need our stock price service. So luckily, we already have a service that can get the price of a stock for us based on a symbol. So let's get that into the service. That's our stock price service. And we'll just take that through the constructor. Beautiful, that's all we gotta do. Let's use that to get the price for the symbol that we're selling. And that's async, so we have to await it. And that's all we need. And actually, this reads pretty clean. Just stock price service, get price. So I'm going to remove this comment right here because I feel like this is pretty self-explanatory. No need to over comment. All right, working our way through, let's add an asset transaction for the sale to the user's account. So take that account, the asset transactions, and we're going to add a new asset transaction. And let's fill out all of these properties. So the account, that'll be the seller. The asset, that's going to be a new asset. Let's create that. That's going to have some properties on it too. The price per share, that's the stock price that we just got from our stock price service right here. And the symbol, just the symbol that we want to sell. And then outside of the asset, the date process, that's just right now. The ID, we're not going to set because the database will do that for us. Is purchase false? We're selling. And last but not least, the shares, that is the shares that we are trying to sell. Great, so that looks good. Again, probably gonna remove this comment because pretty straightforward, just adding an asset transaction for the stock that we're trying to sell. And last but not least, we'll update the account. So I guess that kind of fits into adding the asset transaction. But along with that, we need to update the account's balance. So we have the balance we need to add because they're selling, so they're gonna get money back. And how much they gained is the price of the stock times the shares that they sold. And now that the seller's account is all done, we can commit that to the database, but we're gonna need a service to do that, which we already have, and that is the iData service for accounts. And that'll just be our account service. So let's generate a field for that. Looks good, and then all we gotta do is take our account service and update the account. So we need the ID for the account. That's no big deal, we already got that. And then we just need the account. And I'll get rid of this comment too. And there we go, that is our sell stock service. Looking good. So now that the sell stock service is done, I'm gonna register that in my dependency injection container. So register the interface just as that implementation that we just created. And now I wanna test out the service real quick. So I just have this little test method that we run on startup. So let's put a breakpoint right here. And I'm gonna attempt to sell 10 shares of Apple. So let's continue there. And we get insufficient shares exception because I only have five shares. So let's try that again. Nice to know our exception is throwing accurately, but let's make that five. So kind of like an edge case here because we have exactly five. Let's make sure this actually sells it and continue. And it was successful. Let's take a look at our asset transactions, refresh that. And there we go, that is our sell. Five shares is purchased as false because we sold it. So in terms of the initial scope of the project, being able to buy and sell stocks, create an account, and get real stock data from the API, I feel pretty good about the domain layer. Now there's other features that have been requested such as user roles, 
but we'll consider those features down the road in a later iteration. So with the domain layer being done, I'd like to go ahead and really wrap it up by unit testing all the services in this layer. And that might sound like a lot, but really that's only the buy stock service and the sell stock service because these other service interfaces are implemented in our entity framework project and our financial modeling prep API project, which I would like to write tests for later, but for now, let's just focus on the domain layer. So inside this test project, let's close out everything else and let's add a new folder inside of our services folder for the transaction services. So again, just matching the folder structure that we already have here, transaction services, and then inside of here, we'll have buy stock service tests and sell stock service tests. So let me just scaffold each of these out. So in each of these classes, made them public, marked them as test fixtures, added a setup method where I set up the service that I want to test and put it into a field so that my test can access it. But of course, these services take some dependencies, which we are going to mock. There we go, got my mocks set up using the wonderful library mock, M-O-Q. So got my mocks in fields, and then I initialize them inside of my setup method, which is going to get run before each test. So I'm going to get a fresh mock for each test, which is great. And then I just pass the mock objects to the service. So with everything set up, I went through and scaffolded out all my tests. And I'm jumping around a bit because I don't really want to bore you guys out with unit tests. There's also a source code in the description if you just want to grab these or follow along at a slower pace. But pretty much have a test for each exception that could be thrown, so insufficient shares, invalid symbol, the exception if the price fails, if the account update fails, and then lastly, the success case. And then same thing with the buy stock tests. I believe the only difference is that we're going for an insufficient funds exception instead of insufficient shares. So testing sell stock with insufficient shares, this might be the most difficult one to test because we need to make sure our account that we pass in has some asset transactions on it. So we're gonna have to mock up that data. So let's get that account set up. So this will be the seller account. And then got to fill out all these properties, not the account holder. I don't think we need the balance either because it's okay if that's zero. Just the asset transactions actually. So that can be a list. And most importantly, we need to set the asset on this asset transaction and specify the symbol. So here we go, we'll sell T. And then this needs to be a purchase because we're about to sell them. And the share count, we'll just set that to 10 for now. And then straight forward from here, we'll just do our assertion and then pass in the code that's going to call our sell stock service. Sell stock with the seller account we just created, the symbol we want to sell. And if we want to get this exception to throw, we need to attempt to sell more shares than we actually have. So in this case, I'll do 20, which is more than 10. And it doesn't like this because I need to actually specify the exception that I want. And let's make sure this worked. And there we go, our test passed. And if I change this to five, our test fails, perfect. So I think I'm actually gonna move this whole account creation into its own method because I'm gonna have to create an account for every single method to get past that validation. So I'll just call this create account and it would also be helpful to take the shares as a parameter too so that I know how many shares I'm passing in so that I can adjust how many I wanna sell based on whether I wanna get this insufficient shares exception or not. So sell stock with invalid symbol, we gotta get an exception for that. So let's create a variable for the symbol that's invalid. And then we'll create an account that has an asset transaction for that symbol, which I don't really know how they got in the first place, but hopefully this will never happen. And then we need to set up our stock price service mock. So set up the get price method. And when it gets the invalid symbol sent to it, it's gonna throw an invalid symbol exception for the symbol. So the reason we're even testing this in the first place because if we go to our sell stock service and look at this get price method, as we can see, it can throw an invalid symbol exception. So we wanna make sure our tests account for that. And then let's run our assertion. So just gonna execute our sell stock inside of here and pass in a low amount of shares so that we don't get an insufficient shares exception. Awesome, that test passed. And one thing I actually want to do is with this throws a sync, what you can do is actually get the exception that was thrown into a variable. So we can get that. And now I can get the actual invalid symbol that's on the exception. So as we see this 
exception has a symbol property and then I can do another assertion down here to make sure the expected invalid symbol actually is the same as the invalid symbol that the exception says. So that's just an additional assertion you can run. I could have done the same thing up here, check the properties on the insufficient shares exception because it's got the symbol account shares required shares, which maybe I should, but it's a little bit trivial and it requires a lot of code to test that. All right, fine, I updated it because, you know, it's a test, you wanna make sure everything works. And it really isn't that much code, it's just a lot because I just throw everything in the variables, which probably isn't even necessary, but I feel like it reads a little bit better. Anyways, moving on, last three tests. So if get price throws an exception, of course we're gonna need a seller account. So let's create an account. And in this case, I don't really care about the symbol. That has nothing to do with the test. It's not like the invalid symbol exception. And it's not like the insufficient shares exception where I wanted to make sure that the symbol matched the symbol on the exception. In this case, I really don't care about the symbol at all. So I'm gonna use it.isAny, and that's a string. And now I do care about the shares because I still want to be able to pass that insufficient shares exception. So I'm going to have to specify that. And now let's set up our mock stock price service. So if we get the price of any symbol, again, don't care about the symbol, so I can do it.isAny. Then that's going to throw an exception and then just run that against our throws a sync assertion. Don't care about the symbol. And the shares got to make sure we get that right so five we have ten and gotta specify the exception so in this case just exception test still passing looking good so account update failure exception create an account any symbol and now we need to set up our mock account service so that an update will throw a new exception and then just execute that so I can copy this paste it down there test still passing and now the final test the success test so just making sure the transaction gets appended to the account. So at the end of this, we should have two transactions on our account because here we have one. Then we're going to add the sell. It'll be two. We're going to create an account. So same thing. And then let's actually sell the stock, pass in all of our data, just any symbol and the shares will do five. And then we'll get the actual transaction count, which is going to be on our account. So let me put the sell stock result into a variable. I guess I could just reuse the seller variable. Let's just do that. And we'll look at the asset transactions and just count them up and then just run an assertion. Make sure our expected transaction count equals our actual transaction count. There we go. Everything is good. I assume I could do more tests for this success case, like make sure the balance is right. Actually, that would be a really good one to do. All right, so just set this up real quick. Our expected balance is 100. The price of the stock that we're trying to sell, I set that as 50 through this mock for the stock price service. And then I sell two shares, of course, two times 50 equals 100. So our actual balance should equal our expected balance of 100, which it does. Our test passed. Awesome. So I think that's actually where I'm going to wrap up this video. I think you guys definitely get the gist of unit tests probably. This was a pretty good example doing all these tests. So I am going to do the buy stock service test off camera. If you're interested in those, be sure to check out the source control link in the description. But next time, going to use our sell stock service in our WPF application, so stay tuned for that. Still a lot more to do, but anyways, if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comment section. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.